Hey there everyone, I'm meteorologist Jennifer Lambers with the latest check on your forecast and also we're talking Tropical Storm Elsa, a brand new advisory just coming out um, about 45 minutes ago. So that 1 p.m. advisory just coming out and Elsa right now making landfall in Cuba. Now that's going to be central Cuba again, a long island there. So what we're continuing to track with this system is moving through some of that rough mountainous terrain and also weakening of that system. But afterwards, it's going to be re-emerging just closer towards the Florida Straits and also that southeastern portion of the Gulf. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on Elsa then. But let's go ahead and dive right in, see what we're, where we're looking at. And then also we're going to touch on our local weather too right now. Just tracking a flash flood warning, plus also a potential flash flood watch coming out locally here too. But let's go ahead and dive right in, see just exactly what we do have going on. So right now this is Elsa, not really the most organized system. As you can see right now, just starting to move closer towards Cuba, that central portion, and just looking a little bit sloppy there. But zooming in just a little bit closer, you can see really starting to take that movement with it too. Now this is a six hour time frame. So just Elsa staying stationary for the most part for the past couple of hours. But those current stats, this is a tropical storm. Those sustained winds still at 60 miles per hour. Just a reminder that at 74 miles per hour is when it does get up to that category one strength. Also slowing down just slightly. Northwest at 14 miles per hour is that current track that it's taking. And here's what that track is going to be looking like. This is going to be that wide look. So moving through Cuba, re-emerging into the southeastern Gulf, starting to move up towards the eastern Gulf, just up the side of the peninsula of Florida, that western side. So still going to be impacting the Florida Keys, plus also Fort Myers. Even though that track doesn't take that center low there, they're still going to be on that front right quadrant. So still seeing some of those rougher portions, that heavy rain, those breezy, gusty winds, and then tracking up just up near Tampa, where it will become that low pressure system once it starts to move through Georgia, also South North Carolina and Virginia. And after that, expected re-strengthening back into the Atlantic once it does just move off of Boston and Washington, DC. So keeping a close eye in that area, but zooming in closer towards the timing on this system. Expecting that re-emergence back into the Gulf by tomorrow morning, so Tuesday around 8 a.m., and then starting to trek up. So it's gonna be taking about 12 hours to just move. So a little bit slower by the time it gets to that point. When Elsa first formed, those winds or that speed was over 30 miles per hour. So it was much quicker moving in the Caribbean and now moving into the Gulf. It will find favorable conditions at this time too. So you can start to see that those winds bump up to about 65 miles per hour, but it is still possible that that re-strengthening could take Elsa back to that hurricane strength. So something to keep an eye on for that portion, especially on that Western Peninsula, not really seeing a lot of those tropical storms affect this area, plus also that hurricane strength still possible. But even here locally, while we are outside of the cone and also we are on the Western side of the system, we're still gonna be seeing local impacts. We're gonna be seeing that rip current risk really bump up heading into the week. So in case you are vacationing here, heading on down towards our coastal waters, really be careful. Be careful of those rough waves that we're gonna be seeing, that surf, that rip current risk. Plus also we're gonna be seeing increased rain chances. This is gonna be pushing up a lot of that Gulf moisture. So we're really gonna see that reflecting heading further on into our Tuesday and our Wednesday with just some increased rain coverage, plus also some breezy winds still possible. Now in those area, again, we are nowhere near any of these watches or this warning. This is going to be affecting Southern Florida. So the peninsula region down towards the Key West, that's currently in that tropical storm warning. That's going to be extending up through Fort Myers, also the Tampa area, PCB, Panama City Beach also left out of that. But tropical storm watches just on the eastern side there where they could see some of those impacts. Um, within the next 36 hours. So keeping a close eye on that, again, we are not included in this because Elsa gonna be affecting a different region of Florida, still a really big state, but even then our Gulf region still gonna be seeing some impacts from this. So Tuesday and Wednesday rain, courtesy of Elsa. Also that increased rip current risk too. Let's go ahead and talk about local weather. Yes, we're still continuing to track some of those heavy rain, those showers, those thunderstorms. And they were a little bit more widespread earlier. You can start to see that towards those coastal regions on the panhandle. And then also we're, what we're starting to see is just some scattered showers and thunderstorms in northern Baldwin County, also for our inland counties too. So Clark County, Washington County, still just starting to see some of these. 
In case you're in the panhandle, don't worry, you're starting to see some of that clearing now. Fort Walton Beach, Pensacola was getting a lot of heavy rain earlier, but also still tracking some of that lightning activity too, just north of Bay Manette. Now, in case you're seeing rain, let me know. I'd love to see where you guys are watching from. Um, I'll say hello at the end of the video here. Um, but we've seen a lot of that heavy rain in the panhandle. So that's also what prompted this flash flood warning. This is going to be included for areas near Crestview. If it feels like it's been raining for a while. Well, yeah, it has. You've seen quite a bit of rain just in the past six hours alone. So Crestview, so Oakloose and Santa Rosa counties, that warning is in effect until 3.45 p.m. Luckily, you're starting to see some of that clearing now. But again, in the past 24 hours, this is just what our rain is looking like. Some areas see those heavy downpours of kind of like those microbursts where it's just heavy rain all of a sudden. And then you start to see some of that clearing, that frequent lightning, also some breezy winds. That blue right there, the blue on the map showing to where you get to see that two to three inch range. But then also we're seeing some purple there. And that purple is where that flash flood warning was. And really, that was just in the past six hours. So as we zoom in closer again, that's that six hour rainfall total there. And just in the past six hours alone, almost five inches of rain just to the west of Crestview. So right on that county line there, you can start to see closer. Really starting to get some heavy rain in case you're traveling on 90 and you felt like it was raining a bit. Yeah, you weren't wrong because that's almost five inches there. Now those temperatures, as we do take a look outside right now, mainly in the lower to mid 80s for a lot of places. So it's feeling warm plus mixed with those showers. You're probably feeling that humidity. It's feeling just a little bit warmer out there too. And those lower 80s on our coastal spots, still gonna be a great day to head on down towards the beaches. Just make sure you're being very careful in that water. And that's gonna be for the extension of the entire week. High rip current risk all week. That is gonna be courtesy of Elsa. So make sure you are being careful. But then heading on into this evening, we're still gonna be seeing those mid 70s for our overnight lows. And then heading on into tomorrow, we're back to those lower to mid 80s. So also we're still below average for this time of year. But you know what? I'll take it. I'll gladly take that um, over some heat. I remember around this time last year, we we're talking about record breaking heat. Luckily, not talking about that now. I'm going to go ahead and leave this up with radar um, while I just say hello to some folks. I want to go ahead and say hello to Jeannie. You're welcome for the updates. Hello to Gary from Seven Hills. Larry Pitts is watching. Uh, Lynn says, hope it stays away. Don't worry, it's looking like that. Although we will just start to see increased rain even though we would have been seeing it anyways from our summer like pattern here uh, hello to joyce watching from magnolia springs hello to nell hello to terry and elijah also hello to francisco watching from theodore uh, chuck from barnwell bridget from atmore daniel from foul river jim from century uh, nell from loosedale debbie from willoughby ohio and then also Nicole, hello from Destin. I know Destin saw a lot of rain earlier. You can also start to see it on that map there again early this morning. Luckily, you're starting to see much better conditions now. Hello to Mark from Grand Bay and then hello to Carol. She says, thanks, Jen. Of course, I'm just trying to keep you all updated uh, during this time. We're in the midst of hurricane season, so a lot going on, a lot of things changing during this time. Plus also, we are continuing to track showers and thunderstorms almost every day. We're mainly starting to see those come up in the afternoon, but with that Gulf moisture, especially from Elsa tomorrow, it's gonna to be more of starting in the morning, especially like what we saw for today. So gonna to be keeping a close eye on that. Um, I'll have another look at your forecast coming up at 4 p.m. Uh, and then also Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith will be here for 5, 9, and 10 p.m. to keep you updated. I hope everyone had a fantastic 4th of July. Some folks still recognizing that today as this is the recognized holiday for, for that Monday. So some folks off. Um, and then also we have um, Bob Grip tonight. Just something to keep in mind. He will be on air at 4 and 5 p.m. anchoring all of your latest news stories. And then also Byron Day is here too. And he'll be on at 5, 9, and 10. Just to keep you updated, big breaking news stories still happened over the weekend. So we'll have all the details on that. Plus also that new ELSA advisory coming out at 4 p.m. So we'll have that again for you coming up at 4 I um, also wanted to say hello to Jenny from Stapleton, hello Renee from Milton, hello Barbara from Range, Amy from Stockton, and Blue from Pine Hill, Alabama. Again, I hope everyone has a fantastic Monday. Stay safe out there. Um, also, we'll continue to track your traffic too because we're going to start to see more of those delays building. It's a lot of folks heading home from the holiday weekend. We'll have all of those details coming up on Fox 10 News at 4. Have a fantastic day, everyone.